does gold feature in your current portfolio makeup? The chances are it does somewhere, even if it's only in some quiet corner of some fund that you invest in. Some people do have a more of a conscious effort to make sure they got some exposure to gold. And one of those is Simon Popple uh, from the Brookville Capital Intelligence Report. He says that people should be making that conscious effort to include more gold, uh, as we see uh, a lot of uh, uncertainty around in the market at the moment. Let's uh, talk now to uh, Simon Popple. Uh, Simon, good to talk to you. Uh, thanks indeed for joining us online. I want to ask the question, first of all, why? I mean, the introduction there was basically outlining the fact that people should be looking at this. But just explain why it is more important now than it has been in the past to consider gold as a part of the portfolio or a larger part of maybe people's portfolios. Absolutely. Well, I, I think the if you look at what, what people normally have in, in, in their investment portfolio, they've normally got bonds, um, equities and, and real estate. I'm just really cantering through them very quickly, but um, you know, equities. A lot of companies are struggling to pay their dividends, and income is very important to a lot of investors. Bonds, um, negative yields, which is an issue, and real estate is, um, uh, you know, following uh, COVID nineteen. I think uh, people are scratching their head about, you know, what the future of real estate is, and I think all three of them, um, you know, are, are let's say very full, fully priced. Whereas I think gold is is attractive. Let me pick up on that and uh, take a look at one of the charts that uh, you wanted to discuss, and that is uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average against gold. And uh, this um, um, these channels that are on this this chart explain what's happening because it, it says clearly gold low, stocks high. There is this uh, inverse proportionality. But that being said, it seems now to have almost gone out of the window. We've got gold at high is not seen in, what, seven, almost eight years. Um, we've got the Dow not too far away from record highs. So why are both moving up? And what's different now compared to how it's been in the past? Well, I, I, I think that um, you know, gold is viewed as a safe haven. And with all the money printing that's going on at the moment, I think a lot of it is finding its way into the stock market. And so I think that is probably helping the Dow and, and other stock markets around the world to, to remain where they are. But um, what, what is interesting about gold and stock market is, is, is that basically gold is a safe haven asset. So um, if there was a major correction in uh, the stock market, um, gold stocks could go down temporarily like they did. Um, in 2009, 2010, but you know they can bounce back incredibly strongly, and um, I think that it makes sense for people to have at least um, you know a proportion of their investments in gold. I mean, sometimes the two markets do move in lockstep. Another one of the of the charts that you've given me is is a list of uh, the years when we've seen losses for the S and P five hundred, and then you've got the uh, the relative move in the price of gold. You can see here that there's the small majority have a green number for gold, the percentage move up when we see the S and P down, but it doesn't always happen. And that we have seen years where they have both lost, and indeed sometimes when gold actually underperforms. Absolutely. Well, look, it's not a perfect hedge, but I, I think that um, a lot of people have got absolutely no gold in their portfolio whatsoever. And you know what I'm saying is to to increase the chances of um, at least some form of hedge, uh, it makes sense to have some gold uh, to to help protect you if you know there is a correction. Let me also pick up as well on this point that we have discussed before, and that is the the, the debt issue, the growing debt issue. As uh, been talking to a number of analysts recently uh, about uh, the concerns that we should be having, uh, so far as the economy is concerned, as well as everything else uh, in terms of debt. Again, uh, looking at one of the charts that uh, you've you've given us. Um, uh, attributed here to uh, Moody's uh, an incrementum and this rise that we've seen in the in in the debt pile. Now this most recent um, uh, bar here is an estimate. Uh, I don't know whether or not that includes all of the debt that's been accumulated as a result of uh, COVID-19, but we do know, of course, that uh, the debts that have been accumulated um, have almost been outstripped by what we've seen recently because of the way in which authorities want to try and counter the downward impact of COVID-19 on our economies. How are we going to cope with this debt? And does this mean that uh, we should be perhaps maybe pulling money out of gold because we have to pay down debt 
rather than have a store of wealth which, let's face it, doesn't really have much value? Well, I, I think I'd beg to differ there because it, it, gold is, is, is universally recognized as being valuable. And um, I think one of the main concerns uh, about gold in the past is it doesn't yield anything. But now we've got negative interest rates. Um, then that argument sort of goes out the window. So, um, you know, again, I'm, I'm not talking about sort of going lock, stock and barrel into gold. What I'm saying is that by having uh, a tangible asset, um, that is universally recognized as being valuable, then in this world of increasing debt, um, if there were any issues uh, going down the line with the sort of ever-increasing eye-watering debt, um, then having some gold could, could be useful for you. And of course, the other thing to consider when looking at um, gold as an opportunity, one has to consider what's going on in the currency markets because gold um, as it is in terms of uh, bullion is priced in in dollars, of course. So you're having a, a currency risk, aren't you, if you invest in this market in currencies other than US dollars? How do you go about uh, explaining to people that going into gold is always good when you talk about the difference in currencies? Because that can make a big difference ultimately to the value of what you're storing. But if you look at the currency um, uh, chart that I sent you, You'll see that gold has actually performed very well um, as um, a, as a sort of store of value against currencies, and I think this is particularly pertinent in the current situation because I think quite a lot of people have gone to cash uh, to get out of bonds, equities, or real estate. And uh, whilst that is um, obviously cash is another asset class, you know, what I would say is you probably want to have at least some of that cash in gold because. Um, Gold is fairly agnostic uh, from a from a currency perspective. You know, it's it's as I said earlier, it's viewed as a global asset. So, if um, one currency does suffer, then if you've got gold, you could always sell it in a, in a different currency. Okay, well let's um, let, let's bring this together and, and go back to the the question and indeed what we have at the at the very top of this graphic here where we're both appearing. Um, time to raise your gold exposure. I, I know from your commentary before you say that people have always undervalued and underrespected uh, gold, so they don't have that much of it in the portfolio. What tends to be people's exposure to gold, and what do you think it should be? Because clearly, in this heightened risk environment, both economically, politically, and all sorts of other ways, really, including that the viral concerns we have at the moment with the pandemic. What should be a good balance of gold to the remaining part of an investment portfolio? Well, I, I think I'll kick off by saying, you know, I think you should have some. And most people have got absolutely none. And, you know, if you look at what uh, people's sort of investment universe is, generally they own a house. So that means they've got huge exposure to UK real estate and sterling. Uh, they may have some equities. Now, yes, they're global and, and hopefully some fixed income. It could well be global or it could be just UK. Um, but I, I, I think that, you know, it's not ridiculous to have at least 1% of your wealth in gold. And uh, I'd advocate actually having more than that. But um, as, as a lot of people have got none, I think they should start at least having something. And then um, as they get to know it, more, then you know they'll become more informed and they can decide what what sort of works for them. Let me bring up a, a chart with the price of gold just to talk a little bit about uh, the gold price it is at the moment because I know that you're talking here not just about gold. You're talking about having a spread, aren't you, of, of investments across a whole range of opportunities, companies, ETFs, bullion currencies and so forth. Uh, the gold price itself, let me just quickly uh, revert back to that. Now, uh, I know we've spoken before and I know you you have a reluctance to, to, to pin your colors to the mast in terms of actual gold targets. But what are you saying then about this rise that we've seen in the price of gold? Because gold has, as you've uh, quite rightly said, outperformed many other aspects of many other markets uh, recently. Has it not gone as far as it's going to go in this current move? Well, you know, it, it's still below its previous highs uh, in, uh, you know, 2011. And likewise, so is silver. Silver is, uh, I think it's probably about $17 an ounce in the US. And it has been, uh, you know, it's had a five in front of it. You know, it's been, I think, over $50 an ounce. Um, so I think both silver and gold have got um, you know, potential to go 
a lot higher. Um, but I think it's important to, to, to not only look at making money, but also protecting money. And I just think by having a more diversified portfolio, um, then that's a good start to, to at least protect some of your money. Okay, Simon, so one final question. What is the message about the portfolio makeup at the moment when considering this opportunity that you perceive to be the case in gold and silver? Well, I I think people should at least look at gold and silver. Most people have got none in their portfolio. I think that's a mistake. Um, So there's a lot of different ways they can get exposure to gold. And, uh, you know, the Brookfield Capital Intelligence Report, you know, we talk about those. But and even if they don't, uh, use that, you know, they should definitely look at gold and see if uh, if it would be suitable to have at least some in their portfolio. Yep. Okay, look, Simon, it's a pleasure. Thanks indeed for joining us uh, there online. And uh, you can catch up with more with Simon on his website at brookfieldcapital.com. And as Simon was saying, he publishes regular updates uh, on that report uh, that he mentioned there at the end of the interview. That was Simon Popple from Brookfield Capital. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGTV and subscribe to our YouTube channel.